Welcome to this short introduction on how to use the One Health tool. Enjoy watching. All right, terrific. Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much for joining uh, this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are. What I was going to do is um, just try to give you an overview of the tool itself. Uh, there's a lot of components, and of course, we can't cover that in just a few minutes. But I want to give you a sense for what the tool does and how a user might go about uh, exploring the tool. I have it open already on uh, a projection. A projection is basically um, any type of simulation you would do in the tool itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens when I create a new projection, and then I'm going to walk you through some of the elements that exist in the model itself. So to make a new projection, I selected the new button. I have to name the projection. The name doesn't matter too much. I'm just going to give it a temporary name. And then I would have to define the year range. Uh, in this particular case, because I already have a projection open, the time range is locked. You can't open up two projections with two different time ranges at the same time. I'm going to pick a country of interest. I'm going to pick Ghana. And then it's going to load the epidemiology data and some of the other uh, demographics data for Ghana. So as I click through the buttons, it's reaching into the database and it's creating this particular projection. Once it's loaded it, you can then start defining the program areas. That's what this is about. There's a predefined set, and you can assign interventions to different areas. Once again, there's a predefined assignment, but you can always change it. Let me talk you through what are these overtests. We've loaded up some data for a projection for Ghana. And now we see we have three of these over tabs. One of them relates to health services. One of them relates to health systems. And one of them relates to the impact modules. The impact modules are the calculation engines that work underneath the tool itself. The health services, depending on whether you chose to analyze this looking at programs or at channels, will allow you to do a detailed bottleneck analysis using the Tanahashi model, look, introducing modifications to the intervention coverages, all at the program level. For example, I set this up in a program mode, and I have all of these programs listed here. Maternal and newborn or reproductive health, child health, immunization, malaria, TB, HIV AIDS, nutrition, WASH, and we're creating the NCV module. For some of these, if a situation analysis exists, the user could select it and it would be loaded. So for instance, for Ghana, for maternal, newborn, and reproductive health, we have the situation analysis that was created by UNICEF. Now, of course, if we're doing this in country, we would look to see what is the most recent data. But it gives the user a starting point. Once again, I'm looking at maternal, newborn, and reproductive health. And for the interventions that were assigned, I could look at the population in need, the treatment input, and the different delivery channels. So here I'm opening up the population in need for maternal, newborn, and reproductive health. And a lot of this will agree with our intuition regarding what percentages of the population might need, for instance, antenatal care. So it would be all of pregnant women. 
for labor and uh, active ma management of third stage of labor, 100% of which. The bottleneck analysis will look very similar to what you've seen before. It's the same Tanahashi model that appears in the MBB tool, but there are a few items that are uh, enhanced. You would still be able to look at different delivery channel levels for maternal, newborn, and reproductive health. You can change the tracer interventions. You can change the indicators. You can enter baseline coverages. The tool has you capture what are the plausible causes for the bottleneck reduction. So when you have in that dialogue about what could be caused in the bottleneck, you would capture the information directly in the tool. And then the strategies to overcome the bottlenecks, once again, part of that dialogue, you enter directly in the tool. The expected bottleneck reduction, you would enter here. You get the total bottleneck reduction, and then the frontier coverage is computed in the same way that it is in the MDB tool. The strategy that you enter here, you can later check when you're doing your costing and make sure that you've addressed them. So the reminders are built into the tool itself. I don't have any data loaded right now, but if I did, I would display a graph and I could look at the difference between baseline coverage and the frontier coverage. Now, of course, after you've done these types of calculations, you'll end up with a new frontier coverage. And here, the user reviews the frontier coverage and then makes a decision on an intervention by intervention basis whether they want to move from the baseline coverage to the new suggested frontier coverage. So rather than just simply automatically transferring all the coverages over, the user has to make a conscious choice about it. Within, that's referring to the bottleneck. The other thing that makes this really quite interesting is if we're talking, in this case, about a program analysis, you can do your costing for your entire program, looking at the program specific staff, training, supervision, monitoring, evaluation, etc. And for each of these elements, you can look into the details and define. You could define your particular components of developing a communication strategy. If we're talking about mass media, you could define it in whatever level of detail you find appropriate. And that's another aspect of the One Health tool, which is the user can go to different levels of detail depending on what is relevant for them. They could enter in values that have been attained from a previous analysis if they chose to, but they can also go to a very great level of detail using ingredients level cost. It's really their choice. This example I gave was for maternal, newborn, or reproductive health, but the same process can be followed for all of the other programs. Or, if I did it at a channel level, it could be followed for the channels. I'm going to go over to the health systems, so you can see this briefly. And here you can see the different pillars of the health system, human resources, logistics, infrastructure, health financing, health information systems, and governance. For each of these critical elements, the user can define things like what is the baseline, what are the Limits in pre-service training, so you can enter, for instance, if you're looking at uh, scaling up midwifery, nurses, and, and medical doctor programs, you would also be able to enter in what is the pre-service capacity, how many nursing schools exist, how many midwifery schools exist, how many can students can they allowed to enter or produce each year, and it will account for that timing in the scaling up of human resources. Similarly, infrastructure would have you define what are your facility types, what is the equipment associated with it, the furniture, vehicles, very much in line with what the integrated health model used for their 
structure. So you define the health system, and this of course requires some time, and then the question is, well, what calculations are performed? Now, in this particular case, I've loaded Ghana and the demographic information and the epidemiology information is loaded, but the details of the health system are not loaded. The user has to put that in. For the impact modules, DEMPROJ is a demographics tool, so it looks at how the age distributions will change over time. AIM is the standard impact tool that's used for HIV AIDS. It's a transmission model that's used by UN AIDS in doing their national and regional projections. TB is an impact module related to tuberculosis. LIST is a module that looks at the impacts on child and maternal survival, where it maps coverages of different health interventions to different causes of mortality. FAM plan was one of the standard tools for family planning. And I'll give you a very quick image. Remember, we're looking at Ghana. And we have the default method mix for Ghana. This is based on the most recent DHS survey that was available for the country. And we have a projection for it. I can use, for instance, the maternal deaths. And with the bottleneck analysis, you have this element for strategic planning. I'm going to select maternal deaths and look at the outputs. And just focus on temp for a second. What you'll see is that the total fertility rate remains constant, which makes sense. In this example, I didn't change the contraceptive prevalence rate, and I didn't change the method mix. The number of maternal deaths projected for Ghana was increasing because the total population who is having birth is increasing. Now, of course, if I went and increased the contraceptive prevalence rate, and that's what I'm doing right now, I've changed it so that contraceptive prevalence rate, instead of staying constant, is going to increase linearly to 30% by 2020. And I'm going to save that. And now, if I look at the projected total fertility rate, I expect that the total fertility rate will now decline. For Ghana. Once again, we're looking at TEMP, temp is the output file, and it, we can see it doing its calculations in the corner. And what we see now is a fertility rate declines. It declined from 4.2 to 4.0. This decline is related to the increase in contraceptive prevalence rate. And of course, we would expect to see some impact on maternal deaths. After all, if less women are becoming pregnant, then the maternal deaths in the two scenarios are different. In this case, in 2015, we projected 4,868 maternal deaths, whereas in this new scenario, we have a decline. We have less maternal deaths projected, which makes sense. Of course, this projection is, is very thin. It only has the default information. It doesn't reflect the entire health system. So I'm going to close this projection. And I'm not going to, and now I'm going to focus on a projection that is more complete. Uh, Todd mentioned before that some countries have already uh, performed uh, implementations using the One Health tool. And what I have open here is the analysis from Laos. And in this particular projection, they did it using a program method rather than looking at the channel. And we can examine, for instance, the bottleneck analysis that they did. looking at different delivery channels, what are the particular tracers that were used, what were the strategies involved. I can look at the relationship between the baseline coverage and that, that achieved after bottleneck reduction. I see there's still a significant drop between the continuous use and the effective coverage. I can examine 
the program assumptions that might have been made. by different categories. So uh, I want to tell you that normally a review like this would happen in about half a day to a day, just giving an overview, and I've done it in about 20 minutes. So that's very, very fast, and this is a good time for me to pause and ask for uh, any questions. If you want to know more, you can check out our other videos, or you can click on one of the social network sites. Thank you for watching.